In Unity's first open sourced project called Chop Chop, we can see how scriptable objects can be used to make a game more data driven. It was also explained in the talk called Game Architecture with Scriptable Objects. The idea is that we have some health monobehavior component that wants to store the health value and have some logic about what happens with this health. And instead of storing this value inside this monobehavior, we want to store it in a data repository like the scriptable object, for example, float value scriptable object. And this will have this float value in it. And this allows us to much more easily access this data because now we can access it from our another script, for example, UI slider, that simply relies on this float value SO, scriptable object. The overall result is that our model behavior now rely on the data instead of on themselves. This makes our code less rigid because our float value SO is more abstract than if our UI slider or health CS would rely on each other. Let me show you how we can apply this concept to a simple game example. Hi, I'm Peter and welcome to Sunny Valley Studio Tutorials. Now, first thing that I always do is ask, why do we need this concept? So here we have a simple game where we can move around and we have an enemy that is static that throws a projectile at us and when our player gets hit, the health decreases. In our project player, as well as the enemy are prefabs. So what happens if we want to create another level for our game? Well, we would go to project, create a new scene, and I would like to drag my player into the game. But now if I press play, there will be an error. And this is because my code is tightly coupled. If I check the error, I will see that the health script relies on a serialized field UI slider, UI slider, and it passes to its information when we want to update the UI. So in order to test my game, I would need to create a canvas in my scene and I would need to drag my HP slider UI into the canvas and then connect it to my player UI so that now only I can test my scene. Now obviously the problem is my health script and the rigid connection with our UI. But imagine that you have multiple other systems that your player rely on and this way you would need to drag all of those in your hierarchy to start prototyping a new level using your existing player. So instead of referencing our UI inside our health script, what we can do is use Unity event. So instead of adding to our health a reference to our UI, we can use Unity event to decouple our code. So in our health script, this time we have this public Unity event that passes the float value to whoever wants to listen to this uh, change. So we call this on health change when we modify the current health value. So this way we do not need any scriptable objects. We have decoupled our code. So in our new scene, if I drag the version 2 of my player, which is using Unity events, we will see that this has this non object in our on health change. But if we drag our enemy as well to our scene, and if we press play, we will see that everything works as expected. So we can get hit, and nothing really breaks our game. We can now create a UI canvas object, and we can drag HP slider to this canvas. And we can simply select our player and connect our uh, HP slider UI, no function UI and I had the set value. And if I press play now, we will see that our enemy works as expected and the health bar works as expected. So what's the big deal? Why do we need this critical object solution? Well, what about another system that we have? So for example, we have this health tip that we want to show whenever our health of the player falls below, for example, 0.8, because I pass the value from 0 to 1 of the health for ease of use. So we have this threshold 0.8. I will disable this. And I want to make sure that this appears when the player's health falls below some certain value, or it could be quest system or whatever else is dependent on the player's health. So I would need to go to my player and add a listener, add to this health tip and set the function health tip and we have toggle tip. 
So now if I press play, uh, we will see that when we get hit by our enemy, we are going to show this tip that is uh, showing only when the player health uh, falls below the certain value. But now, if we have even more systems, we would need to one by one assign them to this own health change event. If you are working with someone else, this might not be that obvious that health tip needs to be assigned to the player's health. So this approach might cause many bugs when you want to create a new scene. So the solution to this problem might be our scriptable objects. Before we continue, if you want to learn more about writing maintainable code and creating 2D games in Unity or you want to just support the channel, please check out my video courses, the link will be in the description. Here is the example of a descriptable object that could store float data. So we have a create asset menu so we can create this using create menu in Unity Inspector. We have public class float value scriptable object SO. This extends scriptable object class. And all it has is a serialized value uh, called underscore value because value is a keyword in C sharp. But we also have a property that we can ask about this value so we can get this value as well as set this value. So this would be used by our health script. And we have a public event action on value change. This is an event, something like our Unity event that we have used to inform other scripts about the change of our health. This is exactly the same, but this time we need to assign to it our method and unassign it when we do not want to listen to this value. Now, if we take a look at our health script, now this depends on a serialized field private float value SO current health. So we are back with our previous solution where we have stored our health in a float value. This time, instead of a float value, we are storing it in a scriptable object. We are calling current health.value equals one and we are setting this value inside our scriptable object. On the other hand, the other script UI slider, which shows the UI to the player, also relies on the float value assault float value but this time all it does is assigns itself or its set value to this own value change event so this is a delegate but basically this works exactly as unity event so we can assign to it when we enable this object and we can unassign our set value on disable so this way if we want to assign any other system to our value this float value here we can pass it here and we can assign to it any other script who can do exactly the same. So the idea is that now our UI slider is reusable because we can pass any float value here to this script and it will work. In Unity, all we need to do is select the folder where we want to store our scriptable objects. We can right click create data and we have float data and this simply stores our value. Now I have previously created this player health data and in our hierarchy all we need to do is select our player and assign to this health script our current health this player health data scriptable object and in our canvas our HP slider also have this float value scriptable object assigned. So if we press play as expected you will see that uh, we can still use our logic and we can still have our HP decrease. Now I haven't implemented this tip for the health, but what we can do is we can preview the health value in our scriptable object. And if we make prefabs out of those, what we can do is again, create a new scene. And if we want to reuse those objects, those prefabs, I will select our player. And again, we can press play and we will see that our player walks and acts uh, the same as we had in our game. If I drag our uh, enemy, we will see that it throws a, a projectile. And if we create, if we stop it and create our UI canvas, and if we add it HP slider, which maintains the reference to our scriptable object, we do not need to assign it again. We can press play and we will see that it will start working. So basically the advantage of using scriptable object is that our player as well as our HP slider and any other system in our game has the reference to this asset called player health data or the value of it. And this way we can easily create those other systems in our game, drag them into hierarchy and there is no initial setup required for them to start working. 
Now, there are, there are trade-offs because you need to create all the code behind those scriptable objects. That's why you can check out Unity Atom's GitHub repository, which basically implements a lot of those scriptable objects for you so we can install it and start using those scriptable objects without having to create them on your own. Great! So I hope that you finally understand why we may want to use the scriptable object architecture so we make our games more data driven. This makes working with the inspector as well as with our code much easier for multiple people on the same project. Thanks a lot for watching, I hope you have enjoyed this video. If you did, leave a like, let me know what you think down in the comment section and I will see you in the next video. Take care!